I'm not. <laughs> What's going on with Twitter? Uh, for some reason, I can't post anything to Twitter. Oh, I saw something earlier today that's like rip Twitter. I think their server's down or something. Really? Or maybe they just exploded and died. Well, I don't know. Well, okay then. Okay then. You know what? Let, let me check on my app and see what the fuck's happening with Twitter. I'm not messing with my shit anymore. <laughs> yeah, I fucking hate Twitter, dude. I just do. Well, Jason swears by it. I know he does, yeah. I like it better than Facebook. Also, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't know how to build a following on Twitter. I don't know. You just have to know. get on there and just talk shit and people follow. Oh, you. I'm good at talking shit. You're good at taking shits too. Oh. Yes, oh. I am. That was also good at taking, taking All right. dicks. We're ready to start this damn show now. <laughs> All right. Hold on. I just, I just tweeted. Can I tweet? Did it go through? Um, no. Wow. All right. <laughs> no one can tweet anymore. Okay. Never mind, man. I, find... I just find it weird that my actual cell phone is working better than the internet I pay for. Mm-hmm. Sad. All right. I blame Jason. Let's start this show now. Okay. Right, Are you going to do the, uh, the read? Yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> here we go. In three, two, oh. one. What's up there, guys? Would you like to go follow us on Patreon? Give us a couple of bucks a month. Keep the lights on here at the show. If you'd like to do that, head over to patreon.com slash ompodcast. And if you have a business or you want us to shout out your name at the beginning of the show, we'll do that. And for right now, we want to shout out our newest patron, Mr. Ernie Kenimer. So there you go. If you'd like to have your name shouted out or your business or whatever, Head on over to patreon.com slash OM podcast. Hello, everybody. You know what that music means? It is Thursday night, and it's time for the Open Micers podcast. My name is Jason Robbins. I'm Jacob Craig. And we have a, a guest this evening who uh, is actually one of my oldest friends. And uh, he runs Dixon's Dungeon, uh, a YouTube show showcasing his massive amount of toys that if you're watching on video, you see just a tiny portion behind him right now of his collection. But his name, he's also a fellow drummer, Mr. Michael Dixon. Or Skeletor. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, Jacob, for having me on today. I appreciate it very much. Thank you for coming. Sorry on. about the technical snafu earlier, but I'm glad we're online. <clears throat> well, that's what happens when you try to uh, stream to the internet using a speaking spell. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, E.T. E e e did it. I mean, he reached freaking space with it, so why not, you know? <laughs> uh, it's okay. We're just a, we're a little late, but that's fine. Um, yes. <laughs> so tell us so a little, tell us a little about bit about, um, before we go into really anything, tell us all about Dixon's dungeon, how you got started, what, what, uh, you know, what made you do well, it? Like, why do you like showing people your toys? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, it's just not just toys, you know, I also like do con reviews and record reviews and, you know, ha I had an artist friend on last week and stuff like that. It's just kind of like my jumbled up interest that I mixed up and I, you know, have people on or I do it myself. And it's just like I like showing up the toys because, you know, they're great memories and it's a, a lot of fun. And it's and it's, and it's a community. I watched um, several of the toy collector shows on, you know, the guys that do it full time, some guys that do it as a hobby. And I was like, you know what, I can do that and I could put my own twist on it. I was like, and I think people would actually watch it. And, you know, and I, to my surprise, some people have actually watched it. And I'm happy with it, you know. Wow. Some, some of my episodes get maybe 30 views, but then some of my other episodes get, you know, up to 200 or more. So, I'm, you know, I'm happy, you know, with the amount that I'm growing and the amount that I'm going there, you know. And it's a lot of fun. 
So um, if you had to guess, because I've been a, a guest on the Dixon's Dungeon podcast or the YouTube <laughs> show before. Um, Nerd. Yeah, I am. <laughs> if you had to guess, just a pure guesstimate, how much do you think you, your your collection is worth in total? Um, if I had to guess, you like you want to talk about vinyl, books. I mean, everything I have, comic books and everything. Sure, why not? Um, I would. I mean, it's insured for twenty five thousand. It's got to be but worth way more than that. If I replace all of it, it probably costs probably about thirty five more than that. If I had to replace all of it, okay, thirty five isn't bad. I still um, would have thought it was way you... more than that. <laughs> what do you say? I said yeah. I would still think it was way more than that. Honestly, it, it, it's got to be well, more than that. Oh, well, I mean, I appreciate that. I mean, I you know I lowball myself, you know. There's so, I mean, there's probably about four things in the dungeon, no matter what they're worth, I'll probably take to my grave, no matter what. Mm -hmm. And some of the things are probably, you know, put Molly through college. <laughs> but, you know, um, that's just, you know, I love, you know, it, I just love collecting stuff, you know. My wife's generous enough to let me have this humongous room in the back of our house. And, you know, I just, you know, it's a lot of fun. It's, you know, I, you know. And I, yeah, you're probably right. I probably spent more than I should on this thing, but you know, I love it. <laughs> and when you say that your wife was is good enough to let you have that that room in the back of the house, that literally is the biggest room in your house, is the <laughs> room with your all your collectibles in it. And I'm completely jealous of that room. Well, yeah, and I appreciate it. You know, I mean, thank you. I mean, I'm glad you know you're jealous of it. Sometimes I look around it and I feel shame. But, you know, other times, like, yeah, this is really good. It's really good stuff. And I'm like, man, should I really have all this stuff? Then I say, yeah, yeah, I should. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's all right. So you said that you uh, you valued it around 35000 Yeah. I mean, that's just from a rough estimate what I had to guess mm -hmm. when I um, did it for insurance reasons. And, you know, it is insured. And they said, unless I had... A, a hundred percent detailed inventory. They would only write it for twenty five thousand. So I said that's fine. So yeah, I'm currently so... working on cataloging all my vinyl and all my comic books, then my figures and everything. So right. And what's your exact address again? Um, <laughs> one, two, three, four, seven. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, that's fine. The, the insurance company can never find this episode. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that they will. But uh, so what's uh, what started you in collecting? Like what, what made you? Because I'm, I mean, me and Jason are kind of collectors too. I know Jason collects <laughs> retro games and such like that. I collect comic books and stuff like that. Like, is it just yeah. a collector brain, or was there a certain instance? Well, I mean, like, you know, when I, you know, I was a kid of the '80s, you know, and I always enjoyed it. You know, and, you know, uh, unlike most kids in the 80s, I lost most of my stuff growing up and, you know, garage sales or moves or, you know, my mom just threw it away or some shit. And, um, you know, there's probably about six figures I have that I've had since I was like eight. And those are probably and they're not worth that much in the long run, but they le they mean more to me than anything I've ever paid two hundred dollars for. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Now, and, you know, I just had that and I had comic books, you know, then, you know high school and i kind of got away from it a little bit in college kind of got away from it then you know the star wars power of the force 2 line really regenerated my collecting when they came out with the 90 star wars figures right before right during the re-releases of the films that really caught me on with collecting again you know that's you know rekindled it you know i worked with two people at bebop records that really we would trade each other and we would get other figures that we'd like and you know we would say hey this is what we need i need this figure you need this figure let's trade it was pretty simple then um you know then i got out for a while then you know probably you know 10 12 years ago i just started looking on instagram and facebook and other collectors group and i found the community again i just started picking up stuff and you know loving it and collecting it all over again yeah, the I know I ramble. But, the but collector community no, is pretty... 
I love uh, being part of the collector community, especially the, like for, you know, there's different collectors of stuff. There's you know, stuff that I like, like retro games. And then, of course, the, you know, you have the action figures and the vinyl and all, you know, my brother's really big into vinyl. He's in that community. And, um, you know, there it. And the cool thing is, is that no matter what it is you're collecting, no matter how obscure it is, you're going to find it from somebody, which is yeah. crazy. Like when I, I we did some trading uh, a couple of months ago, you, uh, you and I did. And uh, yep. you had got this old um, Return of the Jedi. Uh, not it's not a figure. It's, a, it's a, like a sort of a vehicle. And I don't know if people realize or remember back then um kenner would make these uh you know vehicles that weren't on screen but they were less yeah, the they the weren't mini rigs, yeah. yeah the mini rigs they weren't as expensive as like you know the big toys like the millennium falcon and stuff like that and uh he's gonna go grab it now but um when i gave it to uh, okay. him it didn't have uh the dome on the top of it and one of its arms were missing and he ended up Look, he found the missing pieces for it, and it, it, that's yeah, so this cool. Yeah, this is it, Nathan. Yeah. And you could just find, like, yeah. random pieces like that for stuff. It's crazy. Well, yeah, it's like it was missing the dome, and it was missing this arm. And I found one on eBay that was pretty much missing everything else except for the dome and the arm. I got it for, like, $8. It came in, and I popped it on here. Then I threw that other one in my trade box, you know, when that next time I go to the convention, you know, sometime after the plague, if we have, if we yeah. ever get out of this plague, <laughs> you know, I might trade it at the next swap meet or something, you know? Yeah. The mini rigs, Jason, that you mentioned, this is another one of them are really cool because, you know, originally Kenner thought they were going to get in trouble because Lucas didn't authorize them first. Yeah. Then when Lucas and his team saw them, he loved them because they added more depth to the star wars universe well you look at yeah, they, uh, just... they actually took some of those toys that they made back then like the uh the troop transport the stormtrooper transport and they actually put it in the clone wars and uh, uh rebels and they it's in the mandalorian too which yeah in that last they in the mm -hmm. last episode that's like i almost should, like shit my pants when i saw yeah. it like holy <laughs> shit and that was yeah. just like you know a 10 12 dollar toy back in the day and you yeah. can Tell the people that are running things now are our age and had those toys because they're putting that stuff into the things that they're making now. And I think that's awesome. Well, well, they had, um, well, you see, the problem was you didn't, they didn't have these well, were on the shelves for about $7. Okay. And the figures were about three to, to four. They didn't, they didn't have a mid range price thing between the $3 figures and and it dropped up to like a twenty dollar spaceship. Yeah. So they needed a mid range product. That's why the mini rigs were created. Well, that was why GI Joe like, did so well too, because they did that as well. You know, the medium sized, like the Jeep. And like I had all those medium oh, yeah. sized toys, like the Jeep and the the Cobra, like the speedboat and all that kind of stuff. Those were the cheaper toys. I had every single one of those things when I was a kid. Oh yeah. So, I mean, yeah, they were, yeah, they're wonderful. I mean, you know, and it's funny that you mentioned that. I had a friend donate me his GI Joe collection, which is when when you see you, you saw most of the stuff in the dungeon, Jason. Yeah. Of but most of that came from one person. He just donated it to me. That's crazy. He was an older friend of mine. He was an older brother of a friend of mine growing up. I ran it up to him. He said, "Hey, you want two box loads of old of old GI Joe stuff?" And I was like. Yes, <laughs> and I drove to Asperg and I got it. And, nice. You know, he's he's a great guy, and I invited him. When next time he's down on the coast, I'm probably gonna shoot a little mini episode with him, just thanking him and asking him why he gave me, you know, hundreds of dollars worth of, you know, free GI Joe stuff. Did it's, he give you that big you know, GI um, Joe? What was it the the Cobra? Um, what was it called? It was like the round. The terror, not the, the terror dome. Was it the ter not the no, terror dome? I forgot oh, what it's man. called. It's like the, it's it's the Cobra base or whatever it is. 
That thing's awesome. <laughs> you guys are so fucking old, dude. You can't even you can't even remember the name of an old toy. What are we doing right now? <laughs> hey, you what shut the up. Fuck well, is this podcast? You're you're closer well, it, to birth than we paper. are. <laughs> That's uh, true. You're yeah. both old enough to be my gay dad. That's right. Ooh. <laughs> but um <laughs> Yeah, in our defense, Jason, we had so much shit thrown at us in the oh, game. Oh, I know. Like, like, like LSD. <laughs> like, I just picked up these things from a collector. I mean, these are beastmen. I forgot about all these things, so I saw somebody say, "Hey, you know, beast." You remember these things, Jason? Yes, I do. Uh, beast boy, beast. Yeah, they're just crazy. Anyway, I, I went to the uh, the five and under store the other day and I ended up picking up a pack of you remember muscles. Yeah, uh, you used to be able to get them for you know twenty five cents in the the machine at the front of the mm -hmm. grocery store when you were a kid. It was uh, I don't know if you ever saw those, Jacob. They're these little pink, mm -hmm. um, little monster dudes. And they were like, you, you know, want me to go grab a few? I yeah, about, grab I one so you can show them. But I found some the other day at the Five and Under store. They made a whole line of WWF or WWE action figures. I had one. It's got. I know exactly. Yeah. I know what you're talking about. You're talking about um, Below Five, right? Yeah. In Diagraville? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Below Five, I, yeah. That's my new favorite store, dude. Oh, I, I've, I've seen those there. Yeah, I had. I couldn't not. Yeah. I couldn't not get that package of them. This is uh, one of the – this is a muscle man from yeah. the 80s. Okay. And um, you got, of course, this is my – this is one I've actually had since the 80s. Yeah. But um, it was weird that you mentioned that because they did the same thing for uh, Masters of the Universe. Oh, that's so, awesome. I want those two. <laughs> this one has, um, let's see, He-Man, Zodiac, and I can't tell – and the lizard guy, I can't remember. I can't um, remember. It looks like they might be on the back. Oh, Cobra Khan, sorry. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. awesome. So, oh, yeah. something that I've I've noticed so far, like that's the first package toy you've you've showed us. So, what are your thoughts on um, collecting package toys versus unpackaged? If it, my personal opinion. If it was made after like 1990, fuck it, open it and play with it. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. Not, it's not really worth that much. If I find a Star Wars 12 back from 1978 in mint condition, still in the case, still in the card, I'm gonna keep it in the card. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's lived 40 something years already, but yeah, I'm gonna keep it on the card. But if it's made after 1990, you know, screw it, I'm gonna open it and play with it. You know. Yeah, that's kind of what I think, too. It's like, um, I collect Funkos mainly, as you can see behind me. And I I'm love taking them that. out of the box. Like, oh, yeah. I, I want to take them out of the box because they just look better out of the box. But, like, I have a, um, a Stan Lee pop bottle behind me that's worth about 40 bucks. If I take yeah. it out of the box, it's worth fuck all. So it's <laughs> like, I'm super hesitant to, you know... Take well, it out and take that jump. You see, that's that's the problem I see with some collectors. You know, I know I have some stuff that's worth stuff, and I know I, I can I'm, I might have to sell it later. But, oh um, fuck yeah, man! That's <laughs> worth that is worth a lot right there. Yeah, this is the oh, only pop vinyl I have is uh, Jack Burton from Big Trouble in Little China. You know what? Also, I'm gonna look up an exact price while we're sitting here while Mike. Um, <clears throat> finishes his uh rebuttal all right <laughs> no I forgot, I forgot what i was rebutting um i don't know i was um i was talking about opening that stanley pop bottle and you were talking about uh that's like the thing with some collectors yeah that's the thing with some collectors they all they're so specific and they're so arrogant about what they collect i just want to punch them in the face <laughs> if i see something <laughs> if i see something and i like it i'm gonna put it in a collection you see what I'm saying? Like, I got yeah. coins, I got license plates, I got, you know, just random weird shit, you know? Like, this three-legged pig. It's a good luck draw from Chile. It's a three-legged pig. Hmm. I saw this at Madame Laveau in New Orleans, at, you know, the, the voodoo shop on Bourbon Street. I was like, yep. that's really cool. 
I picked it up and I put it on the shelf. You see what I'm saying? I'm just <clears throat> some people are just so specific. I'm, I'm not like that. I just maybe I'm a hoarder. Right. I just like it and I keep it. You know. <laughs> Never well, that's yeah. that's my thing. Is like I'm never gonna collect something solely. Like I'm not gonna go out and buy something that's expensive just to have it for the price. Like yeah. I'm gonna get collect stuff that interests me and that that makes me happy that I like. I agree, and like that's my like I hated Funko Pop for years. Mm-hmm. You know, then I decided who the fuck am I to tell somebody what they can like and not like? Yeah, Funko Pops are cool. I have some in my collection. And after I started getting, you know, a few, I looked at them, I saw the collectability of them. I'm not going to go out and start building my Wally Wallace <laughs> wall of Funko Pops or a shelf <laughs> of Funko Pops. But if I see one cool and it's reasonable, I, I might put it in, the collect, in my collection, you know. But it's, mm-hmm. you know, I just, you know, I did not like Funko Pops. I like think for our, the longest time, and I had no reason why. I think our friend Wally could actually build a house out of fun, Funko Pops at this point. He has he so many. <laughs> Good job, baby girl. Sorry, my baby girl had to tell me she's a no, She's awesome. It's okay. You can you can pair it on the podcast. It's fine. I understand. <laughs> you know, you know the, uh, the okay. thing about collecting, like especially when it comes to like the retro games and stuff, it doesn't bother me. That if I find stuff like I have a huge collection of games that don't that aren't in the box, I have maybe seven or eight Nintendo games that are still in the box, like with the instruction manual, and I would prefer that, but they don't have to be in perfect condition. I just like to have them because yeah. I like the boxes, I like to have the instruction manuals, and that's one thing that's missing from gaming now is that instruction manual that. You know, the, you have it in your hands, and you're reading yeah. about the game, and you get home, and you go take a dump, and you're just r- sitting on the toilet reading the instruction manual. <laughs> That's, like, my favorite thing, but they don't do it anymore. Yeah, well, man, it's all online now. Yeah. Yeah, see, I noticed that when I, um, you know, that Spider-Man game that came out about two or three years ago, I had a friend that played it, and I was like, well, and, like, I'm just so ignorant. They are like, hey. Are you going to go pick it up? He's like, no, dude. I just, they released it at midnight. I downloaded it and I'm playing it. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> but, um, hey, I'm but behind in that aspect too, man. But just to answer, but just the one thing I want to say though is somebody offered me a complete run of vintage Star Wars figures from 1977 to 1985. I would rather have loose figures than carded figures. Just, is I would like to see that on the shelf rather than, sh- you know, cards on a wall. That's just me, though. Yeah. yeah. To tell you the honest truth, yeah. when it comes to Star Wars figures, I would much rather have the loose figures like you have with the little stands, but I would also like to have... Yeah. It doesn't even have to be the original cards. I would like to have the a reprint of the original card backs just to have, like, on a, you know, behind them or something like that. I think that would just look even more cool. Well, they make this really cool thing, Jason. They make like a miniature, like inch and a half card back mm-hmm. that people set. That's like a repo of the figures. That's like cool. the original card backs that people put behind their figures. Because I love the artwork. Pretty cool, so, uh, especially uh, pretty much any '80s toys had the best artwork ever. Like you go back and let, I mean that's why they're you know they're re-releasing He-Man and GI Joe figures now. And even the Star Wars figures with the the throwback um, card backs is like yeah. they're bringing all that that well, artwork back because it just looks so good sitting on the shelf. I mean, you're a little kid, even as an adult. Like I went and I look, I went to well, Walmart and looked at the new He Man toys. They look just like the old mm-hmm. toys. The packaging is still the same, and I had to tear myself away because I wanted to buy every single one of them. Oh, I agree. Well. Did you see the new Battle Cat they released in at Walmart? No, I haven't seen it, it yet. It looks just as good as the as the as the vintage one, if not better, I might wow. say. Wow. Now I love He Man yeah. figures. And and seeing all the new G.I. Yeah. Joe stuff they got coming out, I'm just like, man, I might have to get a second job. Because <laughs> I just want all this cool shit. <laughs> but I, one of the things I'm oh, yeah. I wanted to ask you about, like, what is one of your best memories of 
toys when you were a kid. One of my best memories is it was sometime around like probably 84 or 85. Went to Kmart with my mom and they had a, a sale going on on the, the Star Wars toys. And my mom told me I could get $10 worth. They each figure they each figure was on sale for a dollar. She said I could get ten dollars oh, worth. So I was just standing in the aisle for like half an hour trying to figure out which which <laughs> figures I was gonna get, and that was just like the best day ever. Um, I remember one time I was at TGNY. Yeah, I this, remember that. <laughs> Jason, TGNY was this store that used to be like Kmart, but not quite as nice. If you don't know what TGNY is, Jason, I'm sorry, Jacob. I said Jason. I'm yeah, sorry. I was about to say. I'm sorry, Jacob. It's okay. TG no, you're, and, you're dumb. We can move on. TGNY oh, it, it was um, to Kmart what Kmart is to Walmart now, <laughs> pretty yeah. much. Okay, um, I, I understand. But, so I but, would have shopped there. Yeah, is what you're saying. Yeah. All right. And I went and I went to TGNY one day, and I was like, and. My, I was getting some superpowers toys. I remember because of superpowers. I think now that I'm now that I'm older, there was a wave two superpower. I can say that now. I didn't. I did call them wave two at the time, but I knew that I know what they were called now. Wave two superpowers came out, and um, I was getting superpowers, and the this woman who I had no idea who it was saw the happiness in me, and. She went up to my mom and asked her if she could borrow me for a few minutes because she had no idea what to get her child for for his birthday or Christmas. And my mom was like, yeah, sure. Take my son, complete stranger. Walk around with him. <laughs> so like, Dude, I remember so being like, a kid. We would go to places like Walmart, and as soon as we walked in the door, I'd be like, all right, I'm going to the toy aisle. And I would just go walk to the toy aisle and stay there until my mom came and got me. It, yeah. it was debatably safer. Yeah. It wasn't well, safer, but people didn't know it wasn't safer. Yeah. <laughs> well, the thing that I enjoyed, though, was I um, I showed her the cool Return of Jedi figure she should buy her kid, the Master of the Universe, the superpowers, and the G.I. Joe stuff. The thing is, she bought everything Wow. that I, that I put in her back. Probably good, easy, hundred fifty, two hundred dollars worth of stuff. Then she just gave me back to my mom. So <laughs> I guess my mom kind of gave me out. That is a good feeling, man. I remember I was in the. Um, yeah, I was gonna ask was you, gonna... Jacob, if uh, you had any good memories of getting toys from your mom like this last week or so. <laughs> um, no, not not this last week. Um, I haven't really been a good boy lately. Um, I, I've been, uh, you know banging whores and whatnot <laughs> but um that's kind of a no-no around the house but no i was gonna say i um i remember i was looking at funko pops one time in target and i was with my girlfriend this was probably a couple months ago and uh oh, some on, parents you got a girlfriend yes and we and d uh, believe it or not she let your me have up... sex with her <laughs> your, your at least at least count. once your hand at least count. once i know it doesn't okay. but we have a we have a child together, so that's proof that I banged at least once. <laughs> that's fine. Go ahead. Yeah. Um. But no, she uh. These parents asked me if I knew anything about Fortnite, and I got really pissed off. I was like, No, I don't know anything about Fortnite. And they're like, Well, do you know about uh pop idols? And I was like, Well, you got me back. And uh, they had me pick out uh, the best pop vinyl for their uh, their kid's birthday. And it made me feel nice about myself because I knew that I picked out the best pop vinyl in Target, the best Fortnite pop vinyl for this kid's birthday. And inadvertently, I made a kid happy. Okay. Good for you. You did your good deed. Good for you, I buddy. did. I did my good you, deed for the day. You did the happy. So out of your um, whole... Side note from, uh, from earlier, Jason, that Funko that you showed us, is worth $75. What? So, um, <laughs> you might want to buy an $8 heart stack from Walmart and put it in there as soon as possible so I don't have a heart attack. Yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> wow. But carry, carry on, good sir. Carry on. So this thing here is worth 75 bucks. Even though yeah, I Yeah, don't it. destroy it. Don't destroy it on, on air. Please, okay. God. <laughs> 
Jason, I thought you were like, you, Jason, I will give you forty dollars if you open it right now, just so I can watch him have a heart attack. <laughs> No, please! It makes it worth nothing. <laughs> you see, this is the Literally. collector. It's yours, Jason. You can do what you want with it. I know, I know that. But in with Funko Pops, once the box is gone, it's worth nothing, and it pisses me off. But that's just how it is. No one, okay. no one's gonna pay seventy-five bucks for that out of the box. All they're right, they're well, gonna ask you for half. Here we go. I'm gonna open it right now. No, please don't! Oh my god! All right, just Jason, kidding. If that you open box. that right now, <laughs> I will go pick out. <laughs> I will go pick out the Return of the Jedi figure from 1983, Princess Leia, and Poncho, and open it. Mm. I don't know. I can't do well, that to that's Jacob. A lose. That's a lose lose for everybody. <laughs> I know. I I just no one gets happy. So I what, just want to see you have a heart attack online. So it's what's your no. uh, what's your favorite My piece? My blood pressure is already high. What's your, what is your absolute what? favorite uh, favorite piece in your collection? What was that? What was what? what? <laughs> something was it me? No, somebody's phone it's... went buzzed or something. That was weird. Mine's on silent. Um, but what's your absolute favorite Probably piece mine. in your in your collection? My favorite piece? Yeah. It's probably my number one Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles third printing signed by Kevin Eastman. Yeah. I mean, I was lucky enough to meet the guy. He was lucky en- he well, he was lucky enough to sign my comic, but he signed my comic. Talked to the guy for a few minutes. Most humble guy, nicest guy in the world. And, you know, he he confirmed what I thought for years about the Ninja Turtles. I asked him, I was like, how do you start the Ninja Turtles? He was like, it was a bet. <laughs> One of our friends got drunk and said, made the craziest thing that you can come up with with a comic book. Something like, I don't know, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And, you know, the rest was history. <laughs> Fuck, man. Does Peter Laird ever oh, yeah. do uh, conventions? I... I know he did one a while back in Detroit, like 10 years ago, mm. only because I had a friend that was there. Other than that, I don't think so. Not ever since he got that, you know, $60 million from from Nickelodeon. I don't think he really yeah. needs the money right. anymore. Not a lot of incentive to go hit the road on the con trail. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what about you, Jacob? Uh, my... what's, what's your favorite out of all your stuff? Well, I... I'm glad you asked, Jason, because I just discreetly pulled it out of my binder. Um, so, I swear to God, if you pull out a magic card, I'm going to drive up there and kick your ass. I'll play magic, bro. Good. I'll play that shit. I'm a Yu-Gi-Oh man for life. Grew up in, I've been in these streets. But, um, no, this this came from uh, Pensacon 2017, uh, the first convention I ever went to. I cosplayed as John Constantine, dyed my hair blonde. I'm the biggest Hellblazer fan in the entire world. I love John Constantine. Matt Ryan, who played Constantine on the TV show, was there, and he signed my DC Rebirth Hellblazer number one. And he, um, the mistake I made was that he, I had it, I had him personalize it to me, and he said, um, "Just Jacob, so good to meet you. Cheers, mate." But um, aside from the personalization with just the signature and, and the, the what the comic is worth now, I got it appraised at the local comic book store. They said it was about 75 bucks. So it's, uh, it's not the most expensive thing I own, but it means the most to me. Because Matt Ryan was the most nicest fucking person That's I've ever awesome. met. Um, I got a lot of stuff signed, you know, like I, I got a Mario three poster signed by Charles Martinet. Um, I have a book signed by Bruce Campbell, but my most favorite piece, um, that I have is a personalized, uh, print that was sent to me through the mail by Drew Struzan, uh, the guy who did the movie posters, uh, some of the best movie posters of all time, like the the Star Wars trilogy, the the prequels, E.T., all the Indiana Jones movies, uh, 
uh, the Goonies. Like you've you've seen this dude's movie posters. You, you, you've you've seen those posters. You've seen his signature Drew at the by the poster for the thing. Um, but he sent me a nice. personalized because some friends of mine met him and told him about me and I was an artist and how much I loved his work and stuff. And uh, he sent me in the mail a personalized one of his prints that said to Jason, best wishes, Drew. And I got it under glass right now. And I, I still have the uh, on the back side. They actually attached the um, the the envelope that he sent it in. And so I've got it all um, in airtight glass. So I'm going to take that with me when I die. No one will ever, ever get that after me. I'm taking it. I'm taking it to the afterlife with me. Oh, okay. man. Uh, so before we get into the, um, I the do, back half I do of have the one episode. Thing I want to mention. I do have okay. this Monsters Anonymous poster signed by Jason Robbins <laughs> that I'm going to start auctioning off. Yeah. Right now. Um, wants to buy it. I don't think anyone wants that actually. Yeah, it's not uh, worth that much because I still have about thirty of those. <laughs> so, I'll give you about five bucks to just keep it. Okay. Because no, it's, I mean, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It's actually on my wall as one of my uh, proud events because I'm still happy that I was able to help put that event together for Jason and you know, you know. For better or worse, Jeremy London and Wallace, because they were, you know, it was a really cool event, you know. Yeah. And it's, yeah, it's yeah, just, yeah, yeah. it's on the wall just with everything else. Anyway. Yeah, man. I, I actually um paid to get a uh, signed script of the movie so I could wipe my ass with it. <laughs> <laughs> I still got about 10 of those, too. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I kid. I kid. Yeah, but Jason yeah, we we got we only have a few more minutes left in the episode, so let's uh let's let's start All winding right. down here. Let's crack down to the horror portion of our, our yes. show, boys. This is horror month, and Mike, let's talk about oh. horror toys. What are what are some horror toys you own, my man? Well, you know, I I was looking about it and thinking about it, you know, like the history of horror toys isn't really that it's not really that long because. Other than like crappy Halloween toys in the you know from the 40s, 50s, 60s, and onwards, you know, you and you had some Mego toys in the in the 70s. You know, they released you know Wolfman, Dracula, and the big figures. There wasn't right. really a lot of horror figures that came out until the McFarlane toys, you know, in the 90s. You know, and they right. and they did, it, and we all know McFarlane does a wonderful job, you know. So I picked out a few things just to show what, you know, what I had in the collection, you know. Um, the first thing I want to say is, you know, the famous the famous Skeletor, okay? You know, I just want to say one thing about Skeletor. You know, he's a fucking human skeleton. He's supposed to be evil. Yeah. And yet, and he's, he should sound like, oh, yeah, Skeletor, master of the dark. But no, who was, who was the... um? voice guy from the 80s, Alan Oppenheimer or something like that? Yeah. He was like, oh, you royal boo, where have you been? <laughs> where is this going on? I mean, I just want to say, you know, Skeletal should have been much more scarier than it was, but, you know, the voice wasn't. I was just thinking about that when I was doing this. But um, one of the things I want to show you guys is um, my daughter actually cuddled up with this thing yesterday, and it kind of creeped me out. Is um the Texas Chainsaw Massacre plush okay. doll? <laughs> it's um a little plush doll. Uh, you know he doesn't have the chainsaw, unfortunately, but like my daughter fell asleep with this the other day, and I, I, I don't. I, so I think I'm required now to show a four year old this movie this yeah. weekend to show her where this came from. You know, you know, father to father, I would recommend it. So, yeah, I think that'd be great. Molly's going to grow up to be an axe murderer, uh, isn't she? <laughs> oh, yeah, probably so. Um, the other thing, I I was just looking around, and I came up with some other plush stuff that I had that I, I forgot I had, was this Army of Darkness little Ash. Um, was oh, it Ash nice. from Army of Darkness? That's awesome. Yeah, the, uh, the, the little miniature plush, and one of the demons from Army of Darkness. Now, Molly wasn't 
cut only with these. I just found these and thought these were really cool. Um, at Pensacon every year, they have on Friday night, they have this really cool nerd crew. I don't know where they're from. I think they're from Pensacola proper. And they have this trivia thing, like a group trivia, and people get eliminated, and people have to do humiliating stuff for, for things. And I had to stand in front of, you know, 40 or 50 other nerds and dance for this guy. I don't know if you can see him or not. Yeah, it's a little Jason Voorhees. Yeah, <laughs> so I had to dance with Jason Voorhees. They had the car, but he wasn't attached to it. And that's the thing I like about these reaction figures, though. Yeah. They're, um, you know, they come up with, you know, I can't, I probably can't get a good shot of the back of this. Yeah, yeah, I can. You know, they have, you know, Michael Myers, the guy from Scream, you know, the little pumpkin thing from Trick or Treat, you know, Freddy Krueger, you know, which... You know, I like the reaction figures because I guarantee you, if they made this figure in the 80s, he would have stood on my shelf next to my G.I. Joe's. I'm not surprised I mean, they didn't make that's... those in the 80s because they made I... everything else for us that was horror. You know, like they made <laughs> RoboCop figures. Yeah, that's, and... <laughs> that's yeah, but I couldn't really, I couldn't really, pin, I might be wrong and I hope I am. I couldn't really pinpoint horror action figures from Friday the 13th from you know, 80s lines. I might be wrong, but I, I looked, and I I even Googled it, but I might, you know, hopefully I'm wrong, because that'd be cool, you know. Because like you said, Jason, like you said when you did Dixon's Dungeon you know, a while back, you know, they did, what, Nightmare on Elm Street movie. Uh-huh. They did, and well, NES cartridge, and they did um, Friday the 13th NES cartridge. Uh-huh. You know, they, you know, I'm surprised they didn't come on Friday the 13th cartoon. It's the Saturday morning. Well, they you know, did have Jason the uh, the actual a song the, and dance. Well, do yeah. you remember the uh, the Friday the Thirteenth TV show that they had in the late eighties? I do. Wasn't it like really screwed up because like halfway through it would switch the plot. Yeah, and be something totally different. Yeah, yeah, they did that, and they had uh, Freddy's Nightmares. That was a TV show that went along oh, with wow. it. Wow. Um, but, some um, other stuff. I, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. But, you know, they did the have a, a horror movie called Attack of the Killer Tomatoes that they did make into a Saturday morning cartoon. Yep. That's true. And Toxic Avenger. Also, um, Toxic Avenger, which, you know, is horribly, horribly politically incorrect, but still one of my favorite films of all times. Um, I was also looking around to my other collection in the dungeon. And I found one of my favorite things that mixed two things together: Lucha Door Wrestling, and <laughs> and um, horror monsters. This is Santos and Blue Demon. I'm gonna get that closer. Versus Wolfman and Dracula, which I thought was really cool. I picked this up in Mexico last year. You know, yeah. Ed Wood. I don't know what you feel about Ed Wood, but I love him. He's the Master of cheesy fifties. Oh yeah, you know, um, just sci-fi or horror. You know, <laughs> okay, Jacob, you need to check out Ed Wood. He is a, he is a musical. He is a well, musical. He's a genius, no matter what. Why do you assume I don't know who that is? Do you know who it is? No. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but um, let's see. Some other stuff I dug out was um. The, an Evil Dead video disc. Oh, oh, sweet. That is badass right there, actually. Which I, thought, which I thought was pretty cool. Evil Dead 2, actually. And yeah. I used to have a video disc player, but I think it fell off the back of a truck when I moved. <laughs> and, you know, it's just cool. It's just cool to have. And, Jason, I, do you remember this movie? Jacob, you might, but I highly doubt it. This is a video disc, which is not a video disc. Anyway, I forgot. Not a laser disc. This is a laser disc. This is a video disc. Yeah. This is like a cartridge type thing that you plug in, and it played it like a record. This is a horror movie that William Shatner was in. What? Called Visiting Out. You remember this? I do not remember that at all. See, I didn't know that this technology existed until now. Yeah, it is absolutely. I remember watching this when I was in college. And it was absolutely horrible. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Speaking 
a great <laughs> review of that movie. For, well, speaking for of video Michael disc, I, I can't s- remember. I don't know if Shatner's ever done anything good outside of the Star Trek. <laughs> no. <laughs> Boston Legal. Yeah. Boston Legal, Boston. baby. Oh, what was that show? That other show he was on? Um, uh shit. My dad says. Yeah. Well, that one. Yeah. Yeah, anyway. Um, oh, T.J. Hooker. T.J. T- Hooker or something? Yeah. <laughs> T.J. Hooker. Uh, yeah, T.J. Hooker was pretty good, dude. You know, you showed the video disc. The very what? first video disc I ever watched was, um, or uh, was it video disc or did, or did I see it on, what's the other one called, the big disc? Uh, uh, we're going to be here for Laser disc. I think I saw it on laser disc, but it was Escape from New York. And speaking of Escape from New yep. York, I just wanted to show you guys this. I have the Sna- official oh, Snake Plissken action awesome. figure um, that I got. Is that a McFarlane? Uh, no, it's uh, Real Toys, R-E-E-L, Toys, Nika. Um, got okay. this um, at uh, what's that um, convention that's in Hattiesburg. It's called um, Geek Fest. Hubcon? No, I think it was yeah, called Southern Geek Fest. Southern yeah. Geek Fest. Yeah, that's where I picked this up a couple of years ago. I that's couldn't pass it up. I was like, man, I have to have anything Kurt Russell and and John Carpenter related. I have to have. Yeah. Well, did you? Well, yeah. Do you, of course, you have to be a fan of They Live. Or well, not? What was it? Yeah, They Live. The Rowdy Rowdy Pipe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where I get this from. Yeah. <laughs> You look like your head fell on the cheese dip back in 1957. <laughs> I knew I was going to get. He played play that, that for me like. <laughs> he played that for me like three times while we were waiting on you to get it on the call. Why would it? Yeah, why would yeah, that surprise yeah. you? I love my soundboard. Yeah, I know well, you do. I know. Well, but yeah. So, um, but yeah, that's pretty much all the horror stuff I could dig out that I saw. Sorry, I don't have more, but I might. That's okay, man. Uh, so, what is more. um, what are some of the like ideal, like, horror toys that you would love to get in your possession? I, w- I would like to get you know the six inch versions of the major '80s and maybe late '70s villains like Freddy Krueger, you know, Jason, uh, Michael Myers. You know, just the classics and just have them kind of like maybe murdering, you know, a Star Trek figure or maybe murdering He-Man or something, you know. You know, I think that'd be really cool to have, to have, you know, some of the class, just the classic ones on the shelf, you know. Yeah, I think, I, I think the classics are a good option. Have you ever thought about uh, getting a, like an actual Chucky doll? Um, <laughs> That'd be... I would like to get one. That'd be cool. I saw one of those. Somebody sold one on Pawn Stars on the episode I saw a while back, and it was yeah. It was just what was it called? The, the the Good Boy Doll. Good guys. It? The no. Uh, what, what was that show called? Pawn Stars. Uh, Pawn Stars. Uh, what was it? On, Pawn Stars. Oh, pa- oh, Pawn Stars. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Not porn. <laughs> 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 yeah. Okay. But yeah, it was it was a lot. Of... Uh, Rishi yeah, B in the, Rishi B in the chat said that Shatner was at a cover of Common People that was really good. I don't remember that. I don't remember that at all. I don't know what. I don't know what Common People is. He said it was a remake. I don't know. I don't know. I never heard of it. It was. I don't know if that was a, a TV show or what. You know what? How how are we doing on time? Uh, let's go ahead and start wrapping it up because we're at forty seven minutes right now. We need to go ahead and, and wrap it up for to save on storage space for the because that's what we need. Uh, yeah. That's what we need patrons for. People, we need to. Uh, it's not. Yep. It's uh, it's not free. Uh, I mean, podcasts are free for you. They're not free for us. So if you want to keep the lights on here. You want to keep us going? Go head over to our Patreon at patreon at patreon.com slash om podcast. Throw us a couple bucks a month just to help us out, and we'll shout you out on the show. We have a couple different tiers too. Go check it out. 
You can get all kinds of cool stuff, man. You can get a fucking sticker. We haven't had to send one person a sticker yet. You guys don't want our stickers? Are you too good for our stickers? What's wrong what, with don't you? Don't you still owe me a sticker? Oh, uh, Rishi B said it I was a know. song that that he did. Yeah, Shatner did a did. bunch of music back in the day. Oh, but, yeah. Oh, I, man, I, I saw that. I, I Googled it just now. It, it was the song. Yeah. <laughs> um, Shatner sang a really interesting version of Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. And Rocket by Man. By the Beatles. <laughs> oh, yeah. And Rocket. Oh, God. Yeah, I, I still prefer Stewie's version of Rocket. Yeah, me too. Um, but uh, but guys, if you don't mind, whenever you post this, would you post the link to Dixon's Dungeon? Absolutely. And, you know, I'd appreciate. It. Yeah, absolutely not. We're we're never gonna do that. <laughs> Why would we? Uh, but and, make sure and, people um, click on on your stuff. What? Yeah, and if you and um, if you're listening to this and go to Instagram, search hashtag Dixon three seven three. You'll see a lot of cool stuff. Awesome. Tell people where so they can follow you. Mason, before we go, tell everybody where they can follow you on the uh, the interwebs. Um, oh, I'm sorry. What did you say? I said uh, go tell tell everybody where they can follow you on the uh, the interwebs, like Instagram. Okay. Um, you, you do a lot of toy Instagram, stuff on Instagram. Just search, yeah, Instagram. Just search hashtag Dixon three seven three. That's my hashtag, or it's just Michael dot Dixon three seven three D I X O N um youtube just google dixon's dungeon and it'll pop up and you know if you want to find me on facebook you know just michael james dixon comstock it's personal you know you'll see you might see pictures of my daughter who's in hmm. timeout so i forgot i want to advertise timeout. that to people <laughs> oh yeah probably not uh yeah. well mike thanks for coming actually, on I man I put her in timeout like an hour ago, and I never let her out. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> She's in timeout forever now. Oh no, I'm man! Kidding. But um, thank you. Yeah, thank you for having me on. Thank you for being patient with me with oh, the yeah. snafu of getting started. I'm glad we actually got the video up and everything. Yeah. And um, yeah, just please tag me and send it to me, and I'll promote the link to in the show once you guys get it, you know, processed. Yes, it will be out. Uh, we'll put it on Patreon tonight, and then we'll put it out for the public on Saturday. Uh, Jacob, anything you want to throw so out good. there before we leave tonight? Um, especially tell everybody about the Monday night gig. Yes, Monday nights in Gulfport, Mississippi at District on the Alley at 9 o'clock p.m. I host a blue comedy open mic. It is called Nasty at 9. It's very simple comics of the gulf coast go to this place that's the nicest fucking restaurant and bar i've ever performed at in my entire life and we play we say the dirtiest jokes we can possibly think of and we try to make people laugh with them so if that sounds like it's up your alley come to the district on the alley fantastic um and i think that's sounds gonna good. just about do it for tonight guys uh thank you again mike for coming on the show and I'm going to play our music here. And if you would like to email us, you can email us at openmikerspodcast at gmail.com. We are at openmikers on Twitter. And, of course, we're on Facebook. Uh, just look up Open Micers Podcast and, of course, our Patreon, OM Podcast on Patreon. And we will see you guys next week. All right, thanks for you again. Awesome. Thanks for hanging with us, Rishi B. And uh, actually, if you want to hang around tomorrow night, I'll be here uh, from 8 to 10 Central doing the uh, the RGB High Score Tournament play in Castlevania tomorrow night. Uh, you guys, too, if you'd like to drop by, that's what I'm going to be doing tomorrow evening. Yeah, I wouldn't. Oh, yeah. I, don't, I wouldn't <laughs> think you'd be here. <laughs> no, I, I, I actually have a show, I think. Okay. <laughs> I have a date with my, I have a date with my wife. No. Well, tell everybody Dude, goodbye. I have a date with your wife, too. Yeah. Really? Jada? <laughs> yeah. Jada, do you have a date with Jacob tomorrow? Oh, shit. Yee. Good job, Jacob. Thanks. All right. Take care, awesome. guys. I got to go. <laughs> All right. Good Thank night. you. All guys. right. Later, man.